In this video we'll have a closer look at pronaps. Pronaps, short for protracted naps, are longer naps scheduled to occur during the REM peak, which allows them to be an odd length uh, without risking waking up from SWS. As it turns out, there have already been people who have success, succeeded to adapt uh, to schedules with pronaps, both with the purpose of making a schedule easier to adapt to, as well as replacing a later nap. Find out more in this video. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Christoph Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleep. As I mentioned, the idea behind pronaps is that napping at the right time of the day uh, for more than usual uh, 20 minutes uh, can be done while still maintaining REM sleep and avoiding sleep inertia. The idea behind pronaps was originally published on the Polyphasic Society, uh, where the authors suggested a longer first nap of 40 minutes for people on Everyman Tree who feel like they have greater sleep needs. Uh, Yelte, who you may remember from some of our videos, uh, later independently suggested and further developed the idea uh, of uh, pronaps. Um, as having 35 to 45 minutes for sleep during the 6 to 9 a.m. REM peak and on a schedule that has at least two cycles in the SWS peak. Let's discuss the mechanics of the pronaps a bit more. If a nap is longer than 20 minutes, there is usually a high likelihood of waking up and entering SWS, uh, which leads to rough wakes and possible oversleeps and should therefore be avoided. By placing a nap in the REM peak, which happens around 6 to 9 am, the chance of entering SWS is greatly reduced. Because of this, the nap can be allowed to be longer, which enables the opportunity for more REM sleep to be gained in a single nap. In order to minimize the SWS pressure, a pro nap should be combined with a sufficiently long core placed well in the ideal SWS peak. But this is to ensure that all SWS is taken care of before you even start attempting to enter the pro nap or a lap nap that's longer than 20 minutes. Alternatively, two 20 minute naps uh, could be combined into a single pro nap for adapting to a polyphasic schedule. Basically, you first adapt to Everyman 3 for example, and then remove nap 2 and increase the length of nap 1 instead, uh, effectively making it E2 shortened, but with a pro nap. Such a schedule has actually been su successfully adapted to before, uh, which takes the pronap theory to a whole new level. Um, so when should you use the pronap? It's most useful on the everyman line uh, of schedules, because the dual core line and tri core lines have schedules that already take care of the REM peak, except for dual core 3 and dual core 4. Those schedules won't be as useful as the everyman schedules. Due to SWS pressure considerations, a pro nap is neither suited for everyman 4 or everyman 5, uh, nor is it for nap only schedules. In other words, since you should have at least two cycles to allow for your, all your SWS to be gained in the core already and not spilling into the naps. Uh, these two everyman schedules won't enable you to use the pro nap efficiently without the risk of entering SWS. Well, what are the benefits of pro nap? Well, obviously a schedule with a 40 minute nap instead of a 20 minute one is easier to adapt to because the total sleep time is higher. But if you ignore this and just want to rush for a, total, for a lower total sleep time schedule or a schedule with fewer sleeps during the day while st still having a low total sleep time, the pro nap will enable you to achieve that for sure. It should be noted that in the experience of the community, a pro nap did not seem to allow, allow a greater duration of wakefulness after the pro nap than 8 hours on Everyman 2 with two users on the Discord who attempted it. Uh, in other words, adopting a pro nap will not allow you to stay awake for longer during the day and therefore only helps uh, people get the necessary REM sleep. It's an additional boost, you know. During adaptation, it's possible that some 
some of the time a pro nap will end in an SWS wake, uh, but it's important to remember that the sleep phases are still being redistrib redistributed throughout the adaptation and it will sort itself out as you progress further in it. Still, uh, this is one of the big reasons why we don't usually recommend people to use the pro nap before having successfully adapted to a schedule first. Uh, in other words, it's mainly used as a way to tweak or improve an already adapted schedule um, instead of having people adapt to a schedule with a lower sleep time from the get-go, okay? Uh, though this issue with SWS bleeding into the ProNap uh, is mostly present on Everyman 3 uh, because Everyman 2 already has three cycles near the SWS peak that can help take care of all the SWS need. E2 is therefore optimal for this because uh, the beginning of the adaptation uh, or from the beginning of the adaptation to the end of the adaptation, you don't really experience these SWS wakes from the naps because the core is able to take care of all the need. Okay, so I already uh, mentioned the possibility of merging two naps on E3 together to form a pro nap after adapting to a schedule. Some of you may be thinking about what the possibility of shortening a second core on dual core 1 to a pro nap is like, since that would well effectively result in the same schedule in the end uh, as having merged nap 1 and nap 2 on every man tree. Well, that may work out, but thus far no one has succeeded with it. Uh, the benefit of merging two naps on Everyman Tree is that you don't have to worry about repartitioning, since that's already taken care of everywhere. But when you adapt to Dual Core 1, uh, your repartitioning is going to be lower than if you were to adapt to Everyman Tree. And if you shorten your core further, uh, your body will be forced to cram more vital sleep. Uh, into each sleep than before. Uh, because of that, reducing your total sleep time and creating a pro nap will be more risky than if you keep your total sleep time and just, you know, tweak the existing schedule times instead. So, in conclusion, pro naps are a great way to further improve an adapted Everyman 2 or Everyman 3 schedule. Uh, they also work well with making schedules like Everyman 4 extended more adaptable if you have higher sleep needs. Thanks for watching this video. If you are interested in seeing a video made about longer 60 minute ish naps outside the REM peak, be sure to like this video so that I can see that you enjoyed this polyphasic sleep related content. Anyways, if you have questions about the ProNap, be sure to leave them in the description and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Nap well people!